Oh, man. Now I'm really going to lose it. Hey, buddy, what's the matter? I was tuning up, and my classmates don't tune up their strings like I do. That's why mine sound better, and, uh... And? And the teacher says that I have to help my classmates so they can learn to do things well, and that I have to do it with a smile, so they can become even better than I am. Of course you do, and be happy that your friends play better than you. Can you explain that to me a little better? During their vacation days, Generation Zoom Plus went to visit Tony's uncle, who lives on a farm. Tony, this place is so beautiful. Let's go inside. My Uncle Tom is expecting us. Will there be enough work for everybody? I brought gloves in case there's lizards. Touching them grosses me out. The first lesson that a kid from the city should learn is that cows eat. That means we have to go out into the fields to find their food. da 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 Cutting the grass and singing a song. da 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 God watches us as we work. Enough of that da 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 already. I'm sick of these songs. The son and the work and of my uncle. If I hadn't known this earlier, I never would have come. My uncle pays more attention to them than he does to me. I love it here. Thanks to our work, the cows will have food all year long. Tony, you don't look very happy. Come with me, I've got a surprise for you. And now you're going to learn how to take care of the cows. Wow. This milk's the real thing, not like what you find in the supermarket. Tony, buddy old pal, you're a little jealous, right? I can tell. I spend more time with them because they don't know all these things. But you are my nephew, and you will always have a special place in my heart. The next morning. Train passengers! I'm so glad to see Tony happy and with a smile on his face. Thanks be to God, he learned the lesson of learning not to think about himself and to think of others. I'm sad that our vacation ends today. I was having such a great time. And for me, all the work was really helping me a lot. And the last day I arrived. My uncle's gonna take us to the train in the pickup truck. Awesome. I'm sorry, Mara, but you're about to sit on my hat, and I had a. Ah! Ah! Lizard! Lizard! Got it, buddy? Yeah. Think of others and their needs before my own. What a smart little violin you are. You can't my learn. My is so full of his own stuff that he can't. He said you were so full of yourself. Did you ever hear that expression? You're so yeah, full I of yourself. That. Yeah, I've heard that. And sometimes we're like that cup of tea, Lucy. We're so too like full of was, ourselves. So like if I so like if I was too, um, if I had too much stuff, like if I was too full of myself, then if you were tea to me, it couldn't fit in my heart, right? Because my heart would already be full. It would be too full. And Jesus hmm. wants to come and live in our hearts. So he comes and he tries to look for space in our hearts. He's trying to look for his throne, you know? Because he is the king of love and he wants to fill our hearts with his love. But what he cannot oh, find no. anywhere, he's like, let's say he comes in, into this and he looks into the hearts and says, where, where, where can I sit on the throne? Where can I sit? Where is the throne? And he finds no space. And that's why, Lucy, we need to get rid of our opinions. Many times we want to do things our way. Well, my way is right. And that's the only way to go. You know what? I share a room with my sisters. Yes. And um, my big sister, Christina, mm -hmm. she always wants to put um, on the top shelf all the books. And I want to put on the top shelf all my dolls. And she said, Lucy, just listen to me. I'm older than you, OK? We're going to be putting the books on the top. We're not putting the dolls. So just listen to me, OK? And then I say, well, you know what, Christina? I don't think so. I think we should put the dolls up at the top. She said, I don't even play with those things. And I think my way is the best way, and she thinks her way is the best way, and then mom comes in and doesn't let any of us put anything. Oh, well, you know, sometimes we have to give in so that we can really live together and love one another, and Jesus can really be, you know, in the midst of us. Should I have let her just put the books up there? Yes. That's so hard to do. It's hard sometimes, oh. you know. Giorgio Forsati was born on April 6, 1901 in Turin, Italy. 
Neither of his parents were Catholic, and their disapproval of his faith made him suffer. He also had a sister, Luciana. Pierre Giorgio loved sports. He loved being outside, especially mountain climbing, skiing, horse riding, and hiking. He was always laughing and playing practical jokes on his friends. When he and his friends would go hiking, they would often talk about their spiritual lives and their closeness to Jesus. He was described by friends as an explosion of joy. Everything that Pierre did was because of his love for Jesus. He was known to spend long nights in Eucharistic adoration. Pierre also prayed the daily rosary faithfully. When he was in college, he knew that his studies were important, but he was also involved in many other things as well. He helped start and write a Catholic newspaper and he worked to fight the bad politics in the world at the time. Pierre was from a rich family, but whatever money he had, he would give to the poor. Sometimes he would skip the train and run home to be on time, and then give his train money to help the poor. When Pierre was only 21, he joined the order, the Fraternity of St. Dominic. He was in the Third Order, so he wasn't a priest or a brother, but a part of the Fraternity of St. Dominic as a regular lay person who lived in the world. When Pierre was only 24 years old, he caught a bad sickness from the poor he was ministering to, and he died in July. When the neighborhood heard this, all the poor people came to his funeral. His parents were shocked because they never knew that he had helped the poor so much. The poor people were surprised because they didn't know he was from such a wealthy family. These poor people asked the Archbishop to start the process to canonize Pierre as a saint because of his life full of love and sacrifice. Pope John Paul II said, that he's a modern witness to the hope which springs from the gospel. Springs from the gospel. Pierre was a young college student who loved life, but was never afraid to sacrifice what he had and give it to those who needed it more than he did. He is a great example of a holy young person who knew how to empty himself for the good of those who found him. You know, Jesus says um, he gives us the commandments, like ten you know, commandments. The ten commandments, like love God above everything else, more than. For example, Lucy. Chocolate. More than chocolate, what else? More than your video games? More than... More than what else? Your rollerblades. Your rollerblades. But lots of these attitudes we have, we love them more, the material things more than God sometimes, Lucy. It's a, it's a shame. It's a shame that some, so, we do that many race? times with our God. We're so unjust. Yes. If we love like all that stuff more than God, um, are we filling up our hearts with stuff and then God can't live in there? He can't. He can't because he finds th there's no room. And sometimes, you no know, Lucy, at the end? no room at the inn. When they were looking for a place in Bethlehem and they said, there's no room at the inn. Well, we're saying that with our hearts, saying there's no room in the inn, Jesus. Oh, there's no space sad. for you. There's nowhere for you to lay your head. So we have to empty ourselves, right? Well, Lucy, think about it in your own case. I mean, let's say, you know, if your mom, for example, she was cooking or cleaning the house and all you did all day was just sit around in front of the television because you liked it so much, you know, or played with your video games. I don't have one. My brother does. Your brother has one. We'll say your brother did that. What do you think, Lucy? You know, instead of helping your mom, being kind, um, helping her with her work, you know, we should be attentive. If we had our hearts filled with God and not just our, our ourselves, our own things, we would be attentive to what people's needs are. Oh, I want him to, f to fill it up. How can we fill our hearts with God's love? You tell me, Lucy, because I know you know. By taking all the other stuff out of there, just like you're doing with your boxes you create. But what can we do, Lucy? Where can we go to empty our hearts of all this muck, all these know. useless things that don't please God? What can we do? I don't know. Like, um... Mm, can we pray? Uh, oh, we can okay. probably we can probably ask God to um to take all that stuff away. Exactly. Or we can go to confession. Exactly. And and tell our sins. Exactly. And then clean our, our hearts out. And so then you souls. get your heart gets all cleaned up. This is like scrub uh, it up, dub. scrub, 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 and get your hearts cleaned out so that the Lord can come in. What did we say once? Like His grace just goes. Yeah, I remember when we're baptized. Right back the in grace your soul. inside me, right? <laughs>